untamed, free, the sky for their roof, the earth for their floor. These brave horses of the wilderness roam the land, thrilling in speed, proud in spirit, strong in courage. waiting for their prey, men come to conquer, to steal the freedom of these gallant animals. Outstanding in the herd with less fear and more courage than the others was a beautiful high-spirited red horse, the most desirable prize of them all. She was the one we were after. Yeah. I wonder what Milrick wants with a wild horse. Don't worry about the boss. Anytime he's willing to part with a couple of hundred, there's a reason. You always have beautiful thoughts about people, don't you? Milrick's got an angle. I got an angle. You got an angle, that's all. Only Milrick's got more angles. Let's take horses. No angles. They're honest. They're faithful. Some of my best friends are horses.
glad you're back. So am I. You can start breaking the horse in the show this afternoon. Sorry, Miller. She isn't going to be in the show. It's funny you're telling me what's going to be in the show. She's my horse. You're getting paid for her. Well, I don't want that reward. You found her on my time. Right, bud. You don't have to pay me for that. Nor the three weeks you owe me. For five days I fought with her and I'm keeping her. I'm not turning her over to you to break or sell. I don't like the way you treat horses. No, you don't. Maybe you think I ought to put carpets in the stalls. Why, you? I won't settle anything. Ever since yesterday, when we were at the water hole, I knew you were going to do that. Love at first sight, Ted. Uh, what are you going to do now? Where are you going? You can't just wander. She's got to eat, and you've got to eat. Sorry, I'll figure something out. I'm Jim Martin, foreman here. Anything I can do for you? Oh, thought you might need an extra hand. Well, I might. Is that your mare? Yeah. Has she broke in yet? No, not yet. Well, I guess there's always room for one more. One thing I ask, though. Hard work and no trouble. And break that horse in on your own time, huh? Thanks. Come on, I'll show you where to bunk. Training horses was always easy for me. And though I've been around them since I was a kid, I never had an animal like Bess. Maybe it was wrong. I didn't think so at the time, but I started teaching her tricks. High school stuff, we call it. Simple at first, like shaking her head to say yes. To stop and come to me when I whistled. Then more difficult tricks, like shaking her hindquarters in rumba time. No tricks were too difficult. It was a big game. And besides, Bess was in love with me. Daniels, I'm going to have to let you go. The horse takes up too much of your time. <laughs> well, baby, looks like we're out of a job. I can see you're going to be a lot of help to me. Yeah. you've been in a rush. All week long. We're not heading any place particular, and I don't care when we get there. <laughs> okay, boss. Have it your way. <laughs> All right, old girl, you pick it. Just as long as you don't backtrack. They say it doesn't make any difference which turn in the road you take. We took the turn into town, and it made all the difference in the world. Hey, don't give me that, baby. This was your idea. <laughs>
I worked at the weaver's trade. The only, only thing I did that was wrong was to woo a fair young maid. I wooed her in the wintertime and in the summer too. And the only, only thing I did that was wrong <laughs> was to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. Yeah. Hello, Woody. <laughs> Where'd you come from? Oh, I just thought I'd renew acquaintances. Outfit looks the same. Maybe a little seedier. Is this the same horse? Are you, baby? Tell me, where have you been? What have you been doing? What are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd pick up that prize money. Uh-oh. Miller can't go to like that. I could use 250 bucks. You know he always tries to keep the prize money in the show. Oh, that's too bad. Still sign up for the contest with Billy? Yep. I think I'll go see her. See you later. Come on, baby. This contest open to all? Sure is. Ted Daniels. How's a lot of pretty girls to fight? Oh, can't complain. That isn't the wild horse. Bess, I want you to meet Billy. <laughs> Tell me, do you think now that I'm no longer an employee? <laughs> <laughs> With a horse like that, a man doesn't need etchings. Now, Bess, let's show Billy what you can really do, huh? Let's see here. Yeah. That's a girl. Balance. Steady, Bess. Hold it. Balance. Balance, Bess. That's a girl. Take a bow, Bess. giving you the meanest bronc he's got. Thanks, Woody. Don't worry about it. Last rider is Ed Daniels. Here 
Take too long. I hope this isn't in a way she won't cause any trouble. That'll take care of you. What's the damage, Doctor? You have a multiple fracture of the leg. Fix it up, Doc. I'm a guy that needs two good legs to make a living. Took him to a doctor. He hurt bad? Oh, I don't think so. How'd he make her walk up this plank? Why didn't you ask him? Come on. Come on, get on this board. Back, back. Get in here. You knockhead. <laughs> Come on. Back. <laughs> get in here.
got a riot on your hand, Sheriff. about the damage? I'll hold the horse for security. Send your bills down to my office. Take her down to the stable. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Well, so you're finally awake. He's come along fine. How do you feel? My leg feels funny. You can hardly move it. <laughs> You'll get used to that. You're in a cast from your knee to your ankle. Cast? How long is that going to last? Oh, about 10 days. Oh. Then you can be moved out of here in a wheelchair. Wheelchair? Moved? Where? Well, you have a family or some relatives who can take care of you. Not a one. Well, you can't stay here. We're both overworked as it is. Oh, Dad, I, I think we might be able to manage it. The best in any trouble. I meant to ask you about that. She's wonderful. I knew it. You know, you haven't stopped talking about Beth. Who is Beth? My horse. She's here. No. There's no horse here. Sheriff wants to talk to you. The sheriff? Oh. oh, is it about my horse? Yes. She all right? I've got her at the stables. Oh, that's a relief. Thanks. Oh, Sheriff, would you do me another favor? I've got some money coming to me from the rodeo. Would you mind dropping by and... Don't waste no more breath, son. The rodeo left town two days ago. Two days ago? And what's more, I didn't come over here to do you no favors. I came over to see you about these bills. What are those? Claims for damages done by your horse. Amounts to over $200. Excuse me. Yes, Dad. Dad, we've got to let him stay here. Don't you see? He's helpless. Oh, now, you've helped plenty of people before when they've been down on their luck. I'll take care of him. Well, I suppose we're stuck with him. At least you're stuck with him. Thanks, Dad. How do you expect me to pay these bills if you won't get my dough? It ain't my business to go chasing all over the United States after some rodeo. I can't chase. I can't move. Either the bills are paid or I'll carry out my duty under the law. Which is what? I get a court order to sell your horse at public auction. I pay off the creditors for the proceeds. In the way it says in the books. Good day, Miss Craig. Hi, Sheriff. I've got good news for you. Dad says you can stay. Hey, did you hear what I said? Yeah. Thanks. Would you do something for me? Of course. They're going to auction Bess. Would you find out who gets her? Sure. No, I don't know your name. Penny. Penny Gray. Penny. I'm Ted. Ted Dunn, I know. Woody told me. Glad to know you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll start the auction. What I hear for an opening bid on this fine, flawless, spirited man. A hundred dollars. One hundred dollars is paid. One hundred and ten. One hundred and ten dollars. One hundred and ten is bid. Do I hear one hundred and twenty? One hundred and twenty. One hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty is bid. Forty. One hundred and forty is bid. One hundred and forty. <laughs> one hundred and forty. Are you all through? Surely, ladies and gentlemen, I can hear more than one hundred and forty dollars bid for this fine animal. One eighty. One hundred and eighty is bid. Do I hear one hundred and ninety? Do I hear one hundred and ninety? One hundred and eighty-five. Do I hear 185? All right. 180 once. 180 twice. 
Excuse me, lady. It's a nice horse you've got there. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Were you planning on stabling her around here? No. Nope. Well, um, can you tell me where you're taking her? Look, lady, I'm working for an out-of-town buyer. I don't know who he is or what he's going to do with the horse. Come on. you find out who he was, where he was going? Because I couldn't make him out, dear. He wouldn't tell me anything. That's great. I'm sorry, Ted. I, I did the best I could. I, excuse me. I think your lunch is about ready now. You're quite a surprise to me. I figured any man that Penny would go to so much trouble for would, uh, well, would be a pretty solid guy. What are you getting at, Doc? She tried to buy your horse at the auction. Did you know that? told me about the auction. You gave me a book to read the other night. By Mark Twain? Yeah, by Mark Twain. It, it had a line in it, something like, if you take a hungry dog into your house and feed it, it won't bite you, which is the principal difference between a dog and a man. I want to say that he's right. I'm sorry, I just proved it. Penny, I feel like talking some more. You better take advantage of it. I don't feel this way often. You see, until this accident happened, I never had to count on anybody. I guess I never wanted to. Sort of an independent cuss. I uh, worked for Millerick's Rodeo for a while and for ranches around the country. And when I got tired, I just quit and moved on. It was while I was working for a Millerick that I found Bess. That's a story in itself. This may sound funny coming from a grown-up guy, but she was the first thing I ever had of my own. The first thing I ever really wanted. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe it doesn't make sense. It's something you have to feel. Maybe I'm talking too much. Anyway. I think I understand. Penny, the man who bought Bess, what did he look like? Was his name Millerick? No, I, I, I don't know. Oh. Uh, was he uh, a tough-looking fellow with a, a broken nose? Yes, he was. When do you think I can leave here? Mm -hmm. A month or so. A month? gentlemen, we now present our star attraction, Beth the Wonder Horse. 
a horse with a human mind. All right, Grass, take my hat off. Take my hat off. Add a girl. Now, don't get it dirty. Don't get that hat dirty. I told you not to get that hat dirty. Now, pick it up. Pick it up. Come on, pick that hat up. What are you going to do about it now? Look at that. All dirty. Now, what are you going to do with that hat? Oh, you're going to brush it off? That a girl. Come on, clean it off. Clean it off. That's a girl. That's a girl. <laughs> Beth, do you know what I think? I think these are the greatest horses in the world. Oh, you don't think so, huh? Well, who do you think is the greatest horse in the world? All right, Beth, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Come on, give me a big, juicy kiss. Big juicy kiss, that a girl. <laughs> All right, now give me a hug. Come on, give me a big hug. Give me a big hug. Come on, give me a big hug. Big hug. Come on. All right, Beth. Now crawl like a baby. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and best thanks you. For some reason, the time at Doc Gray's seemed to pass rapidly. Maybe Penny had something to do with it. Hey, take it easy. You're supposed to be the invalid, and I'm exhausted. Me, an invalid? Your father told me to get plenty of exercise. He didn't mean mountain climbing. Uh, we haven't started yet. Ready? build a cabin down there. <laughs> Gang of moonshiners, maybe. Or a murderer hiding out. Well, if I'm right, we'll get a jug of whiskey. If you're right, we'll get shot. That's worth a gamble any day. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look at it. Bring any of it home? Nope, didn't seem worth the fuss. A city salesman came by today, but I threw some gold nuggets at him and told him to beat it. Good. I don't want no strange man hanging around you. You know you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Penny.
Honey, I'm leaving in a couple of days. I, I don't understand. I've seen what happens to guys who tie themselves down. They worry about their jobs, their family, the moments on the icebox. Perhaps they get something out of life you don't. Oh, sure. Eventually, they get to own the icebox. I'd hoped I'd changed your mind about that way of living. Changing isn't easy. It all depends on how much you want to change, Ted. Oh, Penny. It isn't that simple. Wanting something, that means a lot. There's so many things a man wants. He wants friendship, happiness, freedom. Well, what about love? Someone... Or me? A place of your own. Like, like this. Dad owns it. I should have told you before. Those are the things that make a man change. You know that. Hard to fight you, Penny. And you'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back. After you get this. <sighs> I've got a funny kind of right. But maybe I'll like it. Ladies and gentlemen. Fred, let's see you imitate a camel. The Wonder Horse. What is he? All right, Beth. Bow for the ladies and gentlemen. Come on, bow. 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 Get down. Why didn't you let me know about this? It wouldn't have helped you. Might have helped her. Get down. Take a bow. Get down there. Get down. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and Beth thanks you. Fine things for a self-respecting horse to wear. What 
you think you're doing? You got eyes, haven't you? I don't like what I see. I don't like a lot of things I've seen either. Get this, Daniels, and get it straight. Every time you've been around this show, there's trouble. What do you expect when your steers spout oil from their horns? What are you talking about? Skip it. I don't know what brought you here, but... I came for my horse. Your horse? She's my horse, and you know it. Sure, you've made a few bucks off her. You beat the spirit out of her. That's over. You understand, Daniels, that I bought this horse fair and square. Fair and square? No, I don't understand that. I have a paper that gives a complete record of the sale. I don't know about papers. Now, how a lawyer would look at this. But in my book, you swindle me out of that horse. And there's a matter of $250 prize money. Oh, that. To make it fair and square, I'll forget about that. $250? The horse is the star of my show. She's worth thousands of dollars to me. Forget it. You keep your money, I take my horse. <laughs> to be a great partnership. I do all the work, and you do all the work. I'm trying to dope out how I can get Bess. Well, why don't you just steal her? That's exactly what we will do. We'll go back tonight. Don't be a fool, Ted. That's all we need, a stolen horse. Anyway, we can't stay around here to do our figure. Come on, get in. Jalopy run now? It's better. Uh, keep your eyes on the temperature gauge, will you? Take it easy, Woody. We put plenty of distance between ourselves and trouble. That's what you think. You shake this thing to pieces. Don't worry about it. She runs better when she rattles. <laughs> runs better when she rattles, huh? this over. Go ahead. Uh, come over here. I'm not at all sure that horse don't understand the language. The horse can't go with us. You know that, don't you? She's got as much right to quit the show as you have. More, maybe, after the way she was treated. 
Oh, get serious, Ted. That horse is worth a lot of dough to Miller. By now, he's got every cop between here and the next county looking for him. Yeah? That's his worry. Well, if you're picked up with Bess, that's your worry. You'll get 10 years for horse stealing. The way I see it, I didn't steal her. She's still my horse. The way the law sees it, she's still Millick's horse. Look, you've had nothing but trouble ever since you found her. Maybe that's an omen. I'm not kidding, Ted. In court, it'd be open and shut. You beat a man up and stole his horse. No matter how you argued, they'll still send you up for that. What am I supposed to do? Be a good boy and send Bess back to Millerick? The one thing you've got to do, you've got to get rid of that horse, quick. It's the law. Hide the horse. this, an accident? No, it just died of old age. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I can't help you right now, fella. I got an important job. Is that so? I think you'd better get going. Don't worry about me. Oh, say, you ain't seen nothing of a fella with a stolen horse, have you? Who, me? No. Uh, is that your important job, looking for this fella? Yeah, and he's right desperate, too. Is that so? Say, what do you know? The deputy's on a trail of a horse thief. A real horse thief? Didn't know you had those anymore. Yeah, he's six foot tall, brown hair, brown eyes, and uses the name of Ted Daniels. Say, what's this written here? Five hundred dollars reward for the horse? That's right. <laughs> I thought you hadn't seen any horse. Well, then where did this horse come from? What horse? This horse. Well, this horse? Yeah. I never saw her before in my life. I suppose she don't belong to nobody. Uh, just happened along. Huh? That's right. Uh, maybe one of them wild horses you read about. And what would a wild horse be doing wearing all these fancy gadgets? Maybe she was just going to a party. That's enough. You fellas are coming with me. Wait a minute. I think we've got something here. This horse fits a description in the deputy's notebook. He does? Yes, sir. This is a real break. Yes. $500 reward. And can we use it? Say, hey, that, that's right. That's our dough. We found the horse. What do you mean, you found the horse? I mean, if you just found the horse, I saw her first. Uh, maybe we'll have to cut him in. Well, uh, he was here when we found her. Yeah. Okay, pal, we'll make it a three-way split. There ain't gonna be no three-way split. Uh, you mean you'd just leave us here? You collect all that dough yourself? This horse is in my custody, and I'm taking her back to town. Well, that's fine. We'll ride along back with you. <laughs> Sorry, boys, there ain't no room. But uh, maybe you'd like to follow me back in your car. <laughs> Come on. I'd have just got out of 10 years in jail. You look pretty low. Look, the horse will be given back to Milton. The cops will be called on. We've got nothing to worry about. We've got to get best back, Woody.
Uh, we better get out of here. <laughs> Let's get these papers off. <laughs> just like a cub bear. My friend, our troubles are almost over. I mean it. We got 400 miles between us and Millerick. We're almost home. Home? I want to show you a little place just a few miles from heaven. Go on. This is so pretty. Well, Bess, how do you like it, huh? Just a few miles from heaven. Who measures? <laughs> what more could a man ask? Well, uh, for one thing, a roof that don't leak. <laughs> You're too finicky. Takes us a few nails. A little dusting. Shh. Don't talk so loud. It's liable to fall down on us. Listen, Woody, you don't seem to get what a great little place this is. There's hunting around here and fishing. Lots of ground. With a little work, it can be fixed up. It takes a heap of sweeping to make a house a home. Home is where you hang your squeeze box. Say, not that this is any of my business, but uh, what's it all about? Woody? I've been doing a lot of thinking. This life is no good, running from place to place, sleeping under trees. There are other things a man wants. The doctor's daughter? Yeah, doctor's daughter. And a place of my own, a corral, lots of open country for best. Maybe I'll breed horses. Maybe an icebox. Woody, I'm gonna live like a normal guy. Yeah, but uh, you're not a normal guy. No, then I will be. It's not that easy. A normal guy has a job. He isn't hunted by his enemies. A normal guy isn't wanted for horse stealing. Millerick, the law, that isn't it. It's a question of right or wrong, and that's inside of you. No, it's on post office bulletin boards at police registers. That's behind me. It's not behind you. There's post offices and police stations in this state, in this county. There's insurance investigators and claims on a stolen horse. What Millerick has done has been wrong. Wrong for Bess, wrong for me. I know that. It wasn't Millerick who did wrong. Millerick didn't take that horse from the hills. Millerick didn't teach her how to count, to balance on a seesaw. He didn't teach her to lumber. You did that, and it was wrong, because it was no more natural than teaching a man to pull a wagon. Or nay. That's quite a lecture, Woody. Okay, I give up. I'm with you. Thanks, Bob. Oh, if you're going to 
coming along with me, I want you to do me a favor. Okay. Stop by the doctor's house. Tell the girl you saw smoke coming from the cabin. Huh? She'll catch on. Oh, by the way, we could use some food. <laughs> Don't forget Beth. It's time she ate like a human being again. I'm not that conventional. It's conventional to kiss, you know. Well, I... I am that conventional. I... I was afraid I... I, I just didn't think you were coming back. I... I've got to see that horse again. What do you think of her? More important, what does she think of me? Well, baby... What does that mean? She likes you. Oh. Look, really clean the place up. We're going to live here. You know, it, it really isn't bad without the dust. We're going to walk. Of course, if you don't like don't it. Don't like it. about the installments on the icebox. We'll pay him. How? Oh. Get a job. Oh. Made some curtains. I saw some beautiful material in town. And I think a lamp here. Oh. Yes. Student's lamp. And a couch here. Oh, sir, I'm going to run into town and have a look around. Hey, wait a minute. I just got back, remember? Take any chances. No, oh, he won't find us here. This time, you better listen to me. too, Penny. That's why I couldn't let you go. I don't understand. Yeah. 
Yes, you do. on the hilltop. I knew that I had to take Bess back where she belonged. What I didn't know was that I had company. Down there. That's where you belong. You're free now. I don't want you. Don't you understand? Go 
can't be. She belongs. Yes. She's back where she belongs. 